And tonight we are incredibly privileged to have the next musical performance. Um, it's one of those performances that you will be telling your children about and saying, I was there. Um, he is a South African legend, veered and respected around the globe. Can you, see, can you hear the band? Uh, he has just completed a national goodbye farewell tour. I know you know who I'm talking about. People have paid big money to see this gentleman perform from all corners of the world. So, ladies and gentlemen, I need you to give an incredible standing ovation for our musical acts, Le Zulu Blanc, Johnny Clegg, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, 
Thank you very much. Uh, welcome this evening. Uh, we've got a kind of a, 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 a buffet of songs here, uh, straddling some 30 years from the, the Jaluka period through the Savuka period to the Johnny Click period and to the current time. Um, this one takes us back uh, to the second uh, Juluga album. This was a hit for us um, at that time. Uh, it's a little prayer for all us Africans called African Sky Blue. African sky blue, your children wait for the dawn. African sky blue, soon a new day will be born. African sky blue, African sky blue, will you bless my life? African sunshine, soon you will warm your children's eyes. African river water will dance and leap in your morning light. African sunshine, African river water, will you bless my life? Ah, oh, will you bless my life? Ah, oh, will you bless my life? Ah, oh, will you bless my life? What will the future bring? You shine through me Will you see me through? African sky blue Will you see me Soldiers march through the air. The African river fall and wash away all the fear. African falling rain, African falling rain, will you bless my life? Ah, oh, will you bless my life? Ah, oh, will you bless my life? Ah, oh, will you bless Bring. 
Thank you very much. Siya bong abad bengko si si Chabulak Chole Litu Bak Banani. Paya dan ka umal, seriali bo ka ba kisu. So, I started this 50 years ago. I was 14. 1967, I met a chap from uh, Emma Bom Singh, who was playing street music. His name was Charlie Mzila, and I said, can you teach me Zulu guitar? And he said, yes. Two years later, I met Sipo Mkunu, and we started Johnny and Sipo. Uh, and um, the style of, of Maskanda music has changed a lot in that time. Zulu street music, you could hear it every day, all day long, concertina and guitar music. And um, my mom was a jazz singer and a cabaret singer. And uh, when I used to rehearse, it used to really irritate her because street music is about being out in the street. <clears throat> and so I'm going to give you this little example. Uh, it's, it's, it's a walking song, and what that is, it's a song that you use to get from one place to another. It's a cycle of melody and rhythm. It's like a big wheel, and you get inside it. And so I would, I would rehearse my, my walking song in my room. And 20 minutes later, my mom would bang on the door, and she'd say, What are you doing? And I'd say, I'm, I'm playing my, my Zulu music. You're killing me. This is Chinese water torture. So I said, why? Katanka, 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 katanka. It's so monotonous. It doesn't go anywhere. You know, jazz singers, they can't sing the same note twice. So, so I said, no, 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 more. It's a, a walking song. So in other words, the song doesn't have to go anywhere. You have to use the song to go somewhere. That's the trick. And you have to surrender yourself to the cycle and be happy that it's coming around again. And it's nice and predictable, just like you're walking. So here's a little walking song. Uh, the first one that I learned. <coughs> and it's, uh, it says, uh, This year, all the girls have ignored me. Um, in what way have I, have I um, uh, made a problem for myself? So, um, and, and so this is the, the bass line. So that goes on forever. Um, let me put this down a bit. And then the forefinger goes. So here we go, put them together. played that for seven years with Sipo and we went to all the hostels. We couldn't play in public much uh, during the, the laws of cultural segregation, the, the Group Areas Act, the Separate Amenities Act and many other acts. So we played uh, in private venues, your lounge, we played in schools, private schools, we played in churches, we played in university uh, private theatres, we played a lot. At that time, uh, it, there was it, it was the, 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 the consulate circuit. 
So you, on the Saturday, the, the American consulate would have a cultural evening. And then the Sunday, the French. So we did, we did every country, you know, traveling around. Johnny and Sebo playing their Maskanda music. Later on, in 1976, uh, I had my first hit. And uh, that song I'd like to play for you now. And uh, the story is actually, uh, I'm, I'm a social anthropologist by vocation and training and a musician by accident. Uh, I spent 12 years at university and um, in my fourth year of teaching, um, I, I, uh, I, I, I decided to become a, a professional musician. But before that, in order to get there, I had to finish an honors degree and I didn't have any money and so I had to find um, employment. And I answered an advert to part-time manage a chicken farm in Knopislachter, which is just here by Diepsloot. It's 44 kilometers north of Johannesburg. So half past five in the morning till 12, all the chickens and eggs I could eat for free and a place to stay. And I thought as a student, uh, that was brilliant. So I worked there for six months and then uh, had enough money and finished my honors degree and started teaching. But it was one of the experiences there. Uh, I, I, was, um, I was supposed to be the manager. So on Monday morning at half past five, we'd meet and there were 15 guys. Uh, and, and when I had my interview with the farmer, he said to me, you speak Zulu? I said, fluently. He said, thank God. He said, these guys, you know, it's very hard for me sometimes to explain what I, what I need, you know, to, for them to do for the week. I said, no, that's fine. Uh, don't worry. Um, it turns out they were all illegal immigrants from Malawi. <laughs> so I learned to say, Molo Buanje. Kayenu, Didibuinu. So I learned a little bit of uh, Isnianja. Um, anyway, uh, one, one really cold July morning, we were standing freezing and he was telling us what to do on the Monday morning and one of the guys next to me kicked his, scuffed his toe and he said, Ach, was a Friday. Which means come Friday. And I was just so cold and I thought that is the most brilliant two words summing up what everybody here feels. I'm going to write a song about it. So what I did is I took, uh, at that time, folk music and a picking style called a hammer claw picking style was very popular. Bob Dylan and all these guys and, and, and Paul Simon and Garfunkel, they were using it. And I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a, Zulu, a song in Zulu, but to a, a kind of a country and western folk music, uh, music uh, background. Um, and... Uh, I'm just going to quickly translate. The, the, the words are, Dad, he's writing a letter home. This is his first job. Uh, you're right, the world is a tough place. Dad, work is overcoming me, it's killing me. I wish this week would come to an end now. Waza waza Friday, my darling. Come, come Friday, my darling. You are the one that I will be betrothed to forever. And right at the end, I say goodbye. I'm going now uh, in English, which is a kind of tongue-in-cheek. Anyway, it was restricted on Radio Zulu. At that time, uh, SABC was totally government-owned, and they had three levels of censorship, uh, political, sexual, and religious. If, the, if you said anything that undermined the security of the state, uh, or if anything uh, you said was uh, too promiscuous, or if you undermined religion in any way, your song would not be played. But there was a fourth one which I didn't know. It was called the Cultural Purity Rule. And it was a kind of a logical deduction. If we're going to make homelands, then we have to protect languages, and these languages uh, mustn't be diluted by other languages. So. All the songs and all the adverts and everything have to be in the language of whatever station it is. And so advertising agencies were so, they loved this, because they'd have to make an advert in every single language many times over and charge for it. So I, was, I went in to see, well, you know, I, this is a, this is a, this is, you know, this is crazy. And the person in charge of Radio Zulu said, John, what's the word for Friday? And I said, Olestlanu. She said, why didn't you use it? I said, because it's a, it's a Olesilanu. It's five syllables. I'm a songwriter. 
and I was affected by somebody who said to me, was a fright day. So she said, yes, but that's English. I said, well, was or Does that, it doesn't scan nicely. She said, was a fright day, my dali. What's my dali? I said, kukulami. So she, I, she said, so I said, all of this is actually, it's here to make you smile. It's here to give you a sense of, of uh, what it is to, to be a worker. And, and this is the language that my workers speak, and I'm, I'm, I'm translating it. So, so she said, well, I'm sorry, you know, uh, we, we're, not allowed, we, we're not allowed to play the song. So I said, okay, hang on a second. What is the word for table in Zulu? And she said, itafula. I said, from Afrikaans, tafel. Knife, umese. Mess, Afrikaans. Fork, umfoloko. From English, fork. So I said, you know, himoto, mutter. All languages, if we live together in one society, we would be able to influence and shape each other's worldviews through language. And we're being separated here forcefully. So I said, you know, it's really, it's crazy. So she said, well, we're not lifting the ban. Now, South Africa has always been historically the preeminent country in the world for political irony. And three months later, this song went to number one on Radio Sutu. <laughs> and my first show with Sipo was in Sechehu. In Ponya, the township in Polokwane. So I'd like to remember those days and play you this song. We baba, 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 we was a Friday, seven to go Was a was a Friday, my sweetie. Was a Friday, in a valley go I'm 
going. I'm going now. I'm going. I'm going now. I'm going. I'm going now. I'm going now. Anyway, so um it was a Zulu saying when I grew up, Iskingli Asakumos. A guitar will never build a homestead. So any man whose daughter has been courted with a man with a guitar, he must watch that man. And this was even worse, a concertina. Because it, it's, it's like a little breathing animal. If you listen carefully. Can you imagine that 12 o'clock at night on your phone? So the Zulu called it Zimbabwe's Gasatan which means Satan's ribcage. Anyway, these two instruments were taken, they Western instruments, and they were reconfigured, and they were Africanized. The Zulu guitar is tuned in a, and played in a completely unique indigenous way. It's, it's, a, it's a unique guitar style, which figures with blues music and all the other kinds of guitar music that exist. The same with the concertina. You buy this for 2,000 Rand, then you take it to George Goch Men's Hostel, to a certain room, you knock on the door, and there's an old guy, and he opens it up, and you say, Saubona Baba, and he says yes, and you say, Please, will you fix my concertina? Look, there's nothing wrong with it, just bought it at the shop. But he takes it apart, and he changes all the buttons around in about 40 minutes, and you can play Zulu music on it. And uh, that's how, and yet it's another thousand rand. So, uh, and he, that's how he pays his rent. He's a concertina button changer. So, this is the tradition also, which uh, I've used a lot in my music uh, right throughout my career. Thank you. 
you know that I have to say Time is a distance, distance is a space I've come so far to find you, it's you I can't replace When I feel in the power, lies inside the sound The ghost inside the atom, spinning round and round Now you get some words, something you can't explain Feeling up, sunny Saturday When the wind is blowing Like a lonesome train I reach out and touch you I call your name When the night is lonesome And I feel the coming day I reach out and touch you I call your name Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> those of us who have lived through uh, the revolution will know either somebody who paid the ultimate sacrifice um, at some point during the struggle uh, and the terrible period between 1990 and 1994 uh, where the country was going through tremendous upheaval. I want to go back to that time because all countries go through seasons. They go through summer, they go through autumn, winter, which is what we seem to be going through a bit now for some time as we get our, our house in order. We're youngsters in this game. And the wonderful thing to see is uh, uh, SCOPA and, and our parliamentary democracy functioning and getting things in order. Uh, but this nearly never happened. We are lucky to be here. And my, <clears throat> my mentor, who I met in 1978, Dudu Njovu, uh, he, he was the dancer in, in Chuluga and in Savuga, and we danced together all over the world, um, from Sao Paulo to... Uh, Korea to Japan, Canada, everywhere. Uh, and um, I, I studied under him a, a particular style called Umzansi, which I liked very much and became the, the style that Juluka played. Uh, um, and in 1992, he was assassinated in the political violence. I had many other friends who are on different sides also who passed away. I wrote this song for him. Uh, the Zulu believe that when you die, uh, your spirit goes through a period of wandering uh, between this and the next world. Um, and they believe the spirit has memory. Although linear time stops, everything seems to be happening in the same moment. And the spirit is wait waiting to wake up. And it has all the human appetites, but it has no body. And so, rituals of mourning. Um, a married woman must wear her, her, her black uh, duk or black, uh, some black outfit uh, for a year in case the spirit comes back to the homestead and he keeps seeing his wives with this duk on or this black and performing rituals. So, 
they believe that after a period of about a year, spirit is tired, and that's when they propel it through a ritual called Ogubuisa Iklosi, and they propel it to become an ancestor. And I thought this was a very powerful metaphor for what we were going through, because I flew back from Los Angeles in 1992 to bury my brother and go through the first part of the ceremony, and then a year later to bring him back. Uh, it seemed to me that it was a metaphor for where we were in South Africa in that time. The old order wouldn't die, so the new order couldn't be born. We were like Dudu's spirit, trapped in this one moment. And I wrote this song for him called The Crossing. <clears throat> Yes, 
so much uh, we can have a little break now and catch you a bit later have a, have a, have a great evening <laughs> Was it what you want to
Thank you very much. Uh, I'm often asked what is the, my favorite song that I ever wrote. Uh, I've got uh, 18 albums over 
four decades. And I have a favorite song, but it's, some people say, yeah, but that's not your best song. But for me, it's a, got a, a special place in my life. Uh, it was the song that stopped my academic career. Uh, after 12 years and four years of teaching, we got a top 40 hit in England uh, with this song in 1983. And I was a teacher at Witz, and my partner Sipom Tkunu was a gardener in Houghton. And uh, we decided to become full-time musicians and take a chance. And so off we went as Juluga, and we toured for two or three years. And then later on, as the Juluka project came to an end and the Savuka project began, we recorded our first uh, Savuka album and my producer said, why don't we do that song that, that broke Juluga? Let's record it again. And I was very upset with him because I said, that song has been written already. You don't go to a painter and say, okay, repaint that song for a new exhibition or rewrite that book. A song has been done, it's finished. He said, yes, but this version will have a snare drum <laughs> uh, and a few other changes. Anyway, we, we, did, we, we, we did that and the song went to number one in France, Switzerland and Belgium and launched my second band. So the song launched Savuka and Juluka uh, and gave me an extended life uh, touring. Um, and I'd like to play the song tonight, but I, I just want to make reference to it. It's a song that celebrates Africa as the origins of mankind. Because uh, as a teacher, as a lecturer in social anthropology at WITS, uh, I had to spend six weeks in a special course to try and de-racialize culture. All of these young kids came out of apartheid schools, churches, homes. Uh, they, were, they had a lot of ideas um, because we were 97% white. And if you wanted to come to WITS as a black student, you had to do a subject that wasn't available at Turfloop or any other black university. So the black students who managed to get in were doing things like phonetics and linguistics or Russian or something. So it was a very, very uh, a tough six weeks for me. And as far as we could understand from all the paleontological evidence that we had, we knew that the oldest human fossils came out of, at that time, uh, Tanzania and the Olduvai Gorge. And this together with a whole lot of other biological um, information, we knew that Homo sapiens is a single species, biologically and genetically. And I left in 1983, and genetics went through a huge explosion. And in 1985 and 86, a brand new discipline came onto, uh, the, the, um, uh, into biology called population genetics. Now, when you watch CSI, and they do a genetic match, they do that through a thing called mitochondrial DNA. Now, the mitochondria, the human cell has got a nucleus with all the genetic information. Every single cell in your body, the billions of cells, they can each make an exact replica of you. They can clone you. Now, the same thing happens inside the cell because outside the nucleus is a little thing called the mitochondria and it is an exact copy of the genetic information that's in the nucleus. So there's two copies. And this copy is passed down through mother and daughter, through the female line, okay? For generation after generation, the female line is stable. Forever you can follow. And they flashed on that. Yeah. So, um, all of that, all of those um, <coughs> uh, little moments where they track DNA, it's through mitochondrial, it's through the mitochondria that they do that. And in a famous work that came out around about 1989, um, called The Seven Daughters of Eve, they decided to do a population genetics analysis of Europe. And they tracked, at that time, I think it was 23 countries in Europe, they tracked all those populations back to seven original females. 
and their mother came from Africa. There was only one group of people that didn't fit in. And we still don't know why. And they are the Basques in Spain. Their language also is not related to any other language. So, <clears throat> what we do know now after many decades of population genetics is that uh, the first Homo sapiens sapiens came out of Africa uh, some, somewhere between 70 and 100,000 years ago and made it and spread across the planet. And we are all connected genetically as a species. There's a wonderful moment uh, um, I saw on, on uh, National Geographic where they got eight people uh, and they, they tracked them. So they take a swab of your mouth and then they track you back through your mother and, your, and their daughters and mother and daughters, etc. And they found a Greek immigrant who had been in America for four or five generations, was a woman, and an American Indian from America had a common mother 8,000 years ago and the American Indian couldn't accept it. So we are so obsessed with this idea of race and cultural purity and cultural... Those cultures that borrow the most, that are more open, are the most successful. Those cultures that are closed and don't want to learn from others, they die. So this song, this was part of the lectures that I used to give, man. And, and, and arguments that we used to have. So I, when, I, when I was released from this duty, I had to write a song about it. And that's my favorite song, because it's the bridging song between my two careers. And I'd like to play for you for now.
Thank you very much. Uh, it's been wonderful sharing my experiences with you tonight. Thank you. Uh, and as we move into December and into the new year, we wish you a, a wonderful December, Christmas and New Year. And that 2018 will start shifting us out of our winter a little bit. I know it's going to take time. And uh, you see, when you're 64 years old, you know how important time is. It's this, uh, like there's no tomorrow. So it's, let us keep building. And I want to remember in this song a very great inspiration and builder. Umaki Okina. Asim Bonanga Asim Bonangu Mandela Tina La Pekona La Pechelikona Asim Bonanga Asim Bonangu Mandela Tina La Pekona La Pechelikona Oh, oh, oh.